The circular economy is a concept that aims at the rational use of resources and the reduction of the negative environmental impact of manufactured products, which, just like materials and raw materials, should remain in the economy for as long as possible, with waste production limited to the minimum. Hello, I am Daria Garzon. Here at Beck Packaging, I'm responsible for coordinating the implementation of new raw materials, ISO 45001 and 22000 systems, and the construction of a new laboratory at our premises. Why is the closed loop so important? The make, consume, dispose economy based on large quantities of cheap and easily accessible materials is no longer effective. It has led to the production of as much as 18 million tons of plastic packaging waste per year in Europe. In 2013, the European Commission published its recommendations on using common methods to measure the life cycle environmental performance of products and organizations, as included in the Commission recommendation of 9 April 2013 on the use of common methods to measure and communicate the life cycle environmental performance of products and organizations. The Commission recommends using LCAs, life cycle assessments, which aim to optimize the company's production processes and raise customers' awareness of responsible consumption. Most recently, we have learned that the European Commission had adopted a new circular economy action plan. It entails strengthening the competitiveness of the European economy, taking into account the needs of the natural environment. How do plastics come into this? All plastic packaging on the EU market will have to be reusable or recyclable by 2030. By that time, too, over half of plastic waste should be recycled, in line with Single-Use Plastics Directive. Manufacturers will be obliged to collect and recycle 77% of beverage bottles by 2025, 90% of beverage bottles by 2029, as well as to include certain amounts of secondary raw materials in new products, namely 25% in PET bottles by 2025, 30% in all plastic beverage bottles by 2030. However, the provisions don't specify whether these figures apply to each respective bottle, the total of bottles produced in one plant, or the industry as a whole. That detail will be resolved by the Ministry of Climate during its implementation works. The directives set out ambitious objectives. To achieve them, however, the industry still requires significant support from governments and needs to be reorganized, while customers and waste processors have to adapt. First, plastics came into use in the 1920s and 30s. The 1950s saw them emerge in new areas of everyday life due to many aspects – their price, durability, formability, diability, and particular usefulness in mass production. By the 1960s, the whole world of design would appreciate the new synthetic material and try to use it in various ways. Plastics gradually replaced other materials, which were more expensive or more difficult to process, such as timber, glass, or metal. With the additional advantage of being able to imitate such expensive materials as wool, silk, gold, diamonds, gemstones or timber. Why have plastics largely replaced glass and other materials? Production with glass requires more resources and energy. Very high temperatures are needed to melt glass. Glass bottles weigh much more than plastic bottles of the same capacity. This additional mass causes vehicles which transport glass bottles to use more fuel. Plastics practically do not biodegrade, but in this respect, they are no different from glass or metal. In turn, they are much safer for our health. For example, when it comes to injuries, there is no coming back from plastics. There is also no reason to turn away. Plastics are widely used in all areas of our lives related to the food industry, medicine, construction, or the automotive industry. We should learn how to treat used plastic as resources, not waste. This involves a transformation of our habits, which we ourselves must undergo and instill in the generations to come. How did the market react? Verifying whether given packaging is sustainable requires considerable knowledge. 
The fundamental factors which make a given product more environmentally friendly include avoiding multi-material and dyed packaging, the best alternative being white packaging with both the bottle or container and closure made of the same material, eliminating such processing operations as metallization, using small labels which are easily separable, just like this one, minimizing the use of raw materials by reducing the mass of the packaging, using alternative materials such as renewable raw materials, using recycled raw materials, eliminating any elements which are not recyclable from the packaging design. As part of best closed-loop practices, Beck Packaging uses in-house mechanical recycling, which involves reprocessing packaging that fails to meet certain requirements, such as those related to size, without affecting the quality of the raw material obtained. Another factor which contributes to closing the loop is the production of PCR, post-consumer recycled raw materials. That is, materials obtained from post-consumer waste. We're putting in great effort to improve our waste sorting system so that it's as effective as possible. We distinguish post-production waste by polymer type and transfer each type of waste to the relevant company, which provides mechanical recycling, yielding raw materials ready for manufacturing new products. We have much hope in chemical recycling of plastics. It involves processing materials and waste to obtain the original raw materials. Skipping the waste sorting stage is a big advantage of this method. First chemical recycling trials have already taken place, though it's currently a pilot project which hasn't been implemented industry-wide yet. What other solutions are there, if any? Plants. Green solutions are already available on the market also offered by Beck Packaging. People say that renewable polyethylene is made from sugarcane. The whole process is slightly more complicated. It is ethanol that is made from sugarcane, which is later converted into the monomer ethylene and then polyethylene as a result of polymerization. Importantly, the properties of that environmentally friendly polymer are similar to those of polyethylene derived from crude oil. In light of the threats that we observe today, we need to change our habits in many areas. Our ability to enact change and succeed depends on all of us, on each link in the chain. The designer, the manufacturer, the consumer and the processor. A technical understanding of the issue and the adequate choice of tools and solutions are necessary to meet the real, not imaginary needs.